So good day class. This would be the second lesson for the finals. We're going to talk about renal disease. When you say renal disease from the word renal, these are diseases that would involve the kidneys. So here in this lesson you will understand the different diseases that are that are being that are present and common among your urinary system and even the kidneys. So there are six major types of renal disorders class. So there are six, kindly take note of the six. We have the first one, glomerular disorders, tub tubular disorders, tubulointerstitial disorders, infection of the lo lower urinary tract, anatomical variations affecting the urinary tract, and renal failure. So there are a lot of diseases class, kindly take note of them. So let's start with the first group, the glomerular disorders. So your glomerular disorders class primarily involves damage to the glomerulus or to the glomeruli. Now your glomerular disorders are divided into two types. We have glomerulonephritis and nephrotic syndrome. Between the excuse me, between the two class, glomerulonephritis has a wider variations. And take note, class, that in your glomerular disorders, there are different causes of destructive changes to the basement membrane. So the, the reason why there is uh, glomerulo, damage to the glomerulus is because of two reasons. It's either immunologic and non-immunologic. Now, whenever you would hear the word immunologic, if you have an idea class, this would usually involve our immune system. Specifically, specifically here, our WBCs and antibodies, which in the next paragraph I will explain. Now, as mentioned in the next paragraph, the former, when you say the former class, the first one or the one that's before, so the immunologic one. The former or the immunologic one is a result when immune complexes. When you say immune complexes, class from the word complex, complex would refer to the attachment, the attachment of two or more substances such as your serum immunoglobulin deposit on the glomerular membrane, prompting other components of the immune system, such as the complement system, WBC, and cytokines to damage the glomerulus. So to explain this class, uh, our body, kasi, whenever our body would encounter an infection, the pathogen, the pathogen would enter our body. Now your body's reaction whenever there is a pathogen or a bacteria, a virus, or fungi, their reaction is that they would activate or the immune system would be activated. So what happens, class, is that the, the components of your immune system, such as your WBC, your antibodies, would form complex complexes. They would attach. They would attach to the pathogens. They would attach to the pathogens, forming a so-called antibody antigen immune complex. AG here stands for antigen class. Ang meaning ng antigen kindly include this in your handouts. Antigen class would refer to any foreign substance in our body. And the most common foreign substance in our body are your pathogens. Now, when there are so many, when there are increased antibody antigens in our blood, they would, remember your blood is being filtered by the kidney. So if there's too much antibody and antigen in our blood, it would now go to the kidneys. And because of, of so much antibody and antigen complexes, it would now cause it would now cause damage to the kidneys. So take note of that. So later, I'll explain the different uh, glomerulonephritis due to immune complexes. While the latter, when you say latter, yung kasunod niya class, the latter or the non-immune complex, the non-immunologic rather, the non-immunologic -immunolo would employ changes on the electrical membrane 
of the glomerulus brought, brought about by chemicals, toxins, amyloid material, and acute phase reactant. To simplify this class, uh, yung non-immunologic nyo, these are substances. These are substances that are non-immunologic or does not involve the immune system. So you could ingest toxins. If you're an alcoholic class, you keep ingesting alcohol or you were lead poisoned or you were po poisoned with lead. So those could cause non-immunologic changes. So here are the different glomerulonephritis due to immune complexes. We have your acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, good pasture syndrome, Wegener granulomatosis, Henriksen lane purpura, membranous glomerulonephritis, membranoplarivirative glomerulonephritis, chronic glomerulonephritis, and your IgA or immunoglobulin A nephropathy. While the second type of glomerular disorder class is the nephrotic syndrome. Under the protic syndrome, we have your minimal change disease and your focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. So let's discuss the immune complex glomerulonephritis. So take note class that your glomerulonephritis refers to a sterile inflammatory process that would affect the glomerulus and is characterized by the presence of blood, protein, and cas in the urine. So remember of this three class, kapag may glomerulonephritis ka, you are positive for blood, you are positive for proteins, and you would be able to see cas in the urine. It can have a systemic disease origin or a result of primary kidney disease that is usually genetic in origin. When you say genetic in origin, it's usually inherited class. So yung cause ng glomerulonephritis nyo could be inherited. Some could be acute, which results quickly, while others could be chronic and may result to death. Take note class that acute glomerulonephritis or your AGN, if left untreated, could progress to a chronic condition which is life-threatening. So let's start with the first uh, immunologic glomerulonephritis. We have your acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Now this, this uh, type of glomerulonephritis class is caused by the bacteria group a streptococcus. Now, group A streptococcus class is also known as your streptococcus pyogenes. So, in your bacteriology next semester, after your first time, you will learn about this bacteria. Now, you <coughs> now group A streptococcus class would contain, or your streptococcus pyogenes would contain the M protein in their cell wall. Upon infecting humans, they would commence from sore throat to respiratory infection. So the streptococcus pyogenes class, one of the diseases it causes is your strep, <laughs> excuse me, strep throat or sore throat. So if you leave uh, sore throat untreated, it could develop into respiratory infections. Once it reaches the lungs, it would now be able to circulate in the blood. And once it's in the blood class, again, as I mentioned in the previous slide, our immune immune system would become activate, wherein our antibodies would form complexes with them. So yung antibodies nyo class, they would attach or they would form complexes with this bacteria. And due to this antibody streptococcus complex, it is neprogenic. When you say neprogenic, it's able to destroy the nephron and would deposit in the glomerular membrane. This will trigger the body's inflammatory reactions by means of the complement system. The accompanying inflammatory reaction would affect glomerular function, allowing large substances to be filtered going to the urine. So that's the problem class with this. So due to the uh, antibody streptococcus complex. The kidney's glomerular function is affected, causing very large substances such as your hormones and other large molecular weight, usually mga greater than 70k daltons, to pass and enter the urine. So the symptoms of your acute post-streptococcal glomerular would include fever, edema, fatigue, hypertension, oliguria, hematuria, increased BUN. 
now they would defer is that they would be you would be able to identify uh, how you would be able to identify this glomerulonephritis is that if the patient is positive for antibodies against your group A streptococcus enzyme. Then in your urinalysis, you would be able to see hematuria or red blood cells in the urine, proteinuria, and the patient would suffer from decreased urine output or oliguria. You would also be able to find RBC cas, dysmorphic RBC, hyaline cas, granular cas, and even white blood cells. Then the second type of immunologic glomerulonephritis is the rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. So this is a very uh, very ugly type of ne ne glomerulonephritis class. This is also known as your necrotizing. When you say necrotizing, nagdedikasya or nabubulok. This is also known as your necrotizing or crescentic glomerulonephritis where in the kidney would lead to a progress progressive loss of function over weeks to months. It often terminates to renal failure with poor prognosis. So kapag poor prognosis class, there is higher chance of mortality. And when there is higher chance of mortality, mas patas ang chance mong mamatay. The, mon the most common cause of for this disease is the deposition of immune complexes in the gomerulus as a complication of the disease systemic lupus erythematosus or SLE. So damage by macrophages to the capillary walls would release cells and plasma into the Bowman's capsule. There is also the production of fibroblasts and polymerized fibrin that causes permanent damage to the capillaries of the glomerulus. So take note of the signs and symptoms. There would also be fever, edema, fatigue, hypertension, oliguria, hematuria, and increased PUN. In urinalysis, you would be able to find hematuria, heavy proteinuria, oliguria, and low glomerular filtration rate. There would be presence of RBC cas, dysmorphic RBC, hyaline, granular cas, and even white blood cells. Then we have your good pasture syndrome. So your good pasture syndrome is an autoimmune dis disorder said to develop outer after bouts of viral respiratory infection. So good pasture syndrome class would usually occur among children, children that would continuously receive viral respiratory infection. So when, when, a, when a child would suffer from viral respiratory infections, it would produce a cytotoxic antibody which targets the glomerulus and alveoli of the lungs. So take note of this class, ang cause ng good pasture syndrome nyo is a cyto cytotoxic antibody targeting the glomerulus and alveoli of the lungs. Attachment of this autoantibody to the basement membrane of the glomerulus followed by complement activation results in capillary destruction. So signs and symptoms would include fever, edema, fatigue, hypertension, oliguria, hematuria, hemoptysis, and dyspnea. You would be able to differentiate this class with your uh, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis by this test. Positive for anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody. So let me repeat, the antibody that the patient is positive, if, it, if he has good pasture syndrome, is the anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody. In the urinalysis, you would find hematuria, proteinuria, and decreased urine output. Presence of RBC cas would also be visible, dysmorphic RBC, hyaline, granular, and WPCs would be would be visible. Then the fourth one, the fourth immunologic uh, glomerulonephritis is your Wegener granulomatosis. So in this disorder class, there is the antibody. So the one that causes this is the ANCA or your ANCA, anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody that is found in the patient's plasma. These autoantibodies attach to the small, ves small blood vessels of the kidneys and the lungs. So once it attaches class, the vascular wall would react to this, resulting in a granuloma formation. So signs and symptoms would include fever, edema, fatigue, hypertension, oliguria, hematuria, hemoptysis, dyspnea. You would be able to identify this 
by being positive for ANCA or the anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody. In your analysis, you would find hematuria, proteinuria, oliguria. Presence of RBC cas, dysmorphic RBC, hyaline granular cas, and even white blood cells would be visible. Then we have your henoxian lane, henoxian lane purpura. So this type of immunologic glomerulonephritis would occur in children after upper respiratory infections. Initial symptoms would include the appearance of red patches on the skin. In some patients, the said disease can progress to a serious form of glomerulonephritis. So signs and symptoms would include fever, edema, fatigue, hypertension, oliguria, hematuria, hemoptysis, dyspnea. You would be able to identify this with other immunologic glomerulonephritis because your henoxion lane is positive for stool occult blood or your fecal occult blood or your FOBT. So I believe it was taught sa inyong ano yan. Ituturo din yan class sa laboratory nyo, yung FOBT. And even with your parasitology. So your analysis result, you would be able to find hematuria, proteinuria, and oliguria. Presence of RBC cas, dysmorphic RBC, hyaline cas, granular cas, and WBCs would be visible. Then we have your uh, membranous glomerulonephritis. So severe, several underlying disorders lead to the formation of this glomerulonephritis. So these underlying disorders would include your SLE or your systemic lupus erythematosus, Jogren syndrome, hepatitis B, malignancy, gold and mercury poisoning are the possible causes. So membranous glomerulonephritis class are caused by underlying disease. So kapag may SLE ka, may Jogren syndrome ka, may Hepa B ka, may malignancy ka, or you were poisoned with gold and mercury, there's a possibility that you would develop this type of glomerulonephritis. So the most prominent characteristic class of this glomerulonephritis is that you're is the thickening of the glomerulus, glomerular basement membrane due to the deposition of immunoglobulin G immune complexes. So there would be the presence of IgG antibody class. IgG antibody or your immunoglobulin G antibody. So that's uh, the effect. That's the visible antibody there. So signs and symptoms would include fever, edema, fatigue, hypertension, oliguria, hematuria, nocturia, thrombosis, weight gain. Your analysis result would be the presence of hematuria, proteinuria, oliguria, and fomiorin. Dysmorphic RBCs would be visible and hyaline gas would be visible. Then we have your membrano-proliferative glomerulonephritis. So this is a proliferation of cells and thickening of the uh, glomerular basement membrane. The first type is due to the increased cellularity of the mesangium of the Bowman's capsule. So there is there is two types class of membrano-proliferative glomerulonephritis. Usually, there is a thickening of the glomerular basement membrane. So the, for the first type, increase yung cellularity ng mesangium ng Bowman's capsule. While the second type class displays extremely dense deposits in the, basement, in the glomerular basement membrane. Now, there are currently, currently studies analyzing the association of this disease with autoimmune disorder, infections, tumors, and various metastasizing malignancy. So signs and symptoms would include fever, edema, fatigue, hypertension, oliguria, hematuria, azotemia, and change in mental status. There would also be decreased serum complement due to the presence of an autoimmune disorder. Then in your analysis result, you would find hematuria, proteinuria, and oliguria. Then we have your chronic glomerulonephritis. So when it comes to chronic glomerulonephritis class, this is a late, a late stage glomerulonephritis. Here there would be advanced stage of any glomerulonephritis resulting in inflammation and worsening destruction of glomerulus with progressive loss of kidney function. So for you to be able to treat a patient with chronic 
glomerulonephritis, you would be requiring or the patient would be requiring a kidney transplant plus. So urine would contain blood that would appear red and cloudy. It is one of the leading causes of CKD or your CKF, chronic kidney failure, and end-stage kidney disease. Signs and symptoms would include fever, edema, fatigue, hypertension, oligoria, hematoria, asotemia, decreased alertness, drowsiness, somnolence, confusion, delirium, coma, seizures, decreased sensation in hands and feet, easy bruising, frequent hiccups, itching, skin pigmentation, muscle cramps, nausea, vomiting, nocturia, and even weight loss. There would also be decreased serum complement. So there would be urinary salts would include hematuria, proteinuria, oliguria, glucosuria, foamy urine, presence of RBC cas, dysmorphic RBC, granular cas, waxy cas, and broad cas. Now the term asotemia class, please take note. When a patient is having azotemia, it means that their blood urea nitrogen or your BUN and creatinine are increased. Then the word somnolence, so the patient is positive also or would have somnolence. So somnolence is a state of drowsiness or sleepiness. So the patient would be having azotemia, decreased alertness, drowsiness, confusion, and delirium and coma, which all affect the mental state of the patient. So kapag may chronic glomerulonephritis ka class, even your mental state is affected, you would have suffer from decreased alertness, confusion, delirium, and worst case, magkakaroon ka ng coma. Then we have your last one, the last immunologic uh, glomerulonephritis, your IgA or your immunoglobulin A nephropathy. This is this disorder class is also known as the Berger disease, common in children after mucosal infection. There is deposition of immunoglobulin A immune complexes in the glomerulus. IgA is increased after mucosal infection. So, one of the antibodies class that would be active when a patient suffers from mucosal infection is IgA. Now, too much IgA in the blood can lead to this type of nephropathy. It is the most common acute glomerulonephritis to progress into chronic stage. Signs and symptoms would include after strenuous activities, there would be macroscopic hematuria, which will recover spontaneously. Elevated serum IgA levels. This is the cause of the destruction of the glomerulus. Then urinalysis result, there would be hematuria, proteinuria, oliguria, glucosuria, and foamy urine. Presence of RBC cas, dysmorphic RBC, granular cas, waxy cas, and broad cas are visible. Then we have your Camel Steel Wilson disease. So this is known as diabetic nephropathy class. So this is very common among diabetics class, uh, diabetics that are suffering from kidney damage. So there are two causes of diabetic nephropathy. So there would be alteration of the glomerular membrane. This is brought about by the increased proliferation of mesangial cells and increased deposition of cellular and non-cellular materials. The non-cellular materials are associated with the deposition of glycosylated proteins due to blood glucose being poorly controlled. It is currently the leading cause of glomerulonephritis. Signs and symptoms would include fever, edema, fatigue, hypertension, oliguria, hematuria, and asthemia. Hematuria, proteinuria, oliguria, glucosuria, ketonuria, and fomiurine would be visible or would be positive. Excuse me. Presence of RBC cas, dysmorphic RBC, granular cas, and waxy cas, and even broad cas are visible in urinalysis. Now we're done with your glomerulonephritis. This time, let's go to the nephrotic syndrome class. So the nephrotic syndrome may occur over time as a complication of glomerulonephritis. It may arise from circulatory shock with a decrease in blood flow to the kidneys and decreased pressure in the glomerulus. It is a group of various disorders that damage the basement membrane of the glomerulus, 
causing abnormal excretion of proteins in urine. Increased permeability of the glomerular membrane is attributed to the disruption of the shield of negativity and less tightly fitting podocytes. So one part of the kidneys class affected here is the glomerular membrane, spe specifically class the podocytes. This allows the abnormal excretion of protein in the urine. Uh, the shield of negativity class would basically repel the albumin in the urine. Proteinuria would cause lower encotic pressure that leads to edema. So in, in the case where in the patient class has too many proteins in the urine, it reduces oncotic pressure, leading to the patient having or becoming edematous or yung namamanas. So take note of that class. Ha? Most of the time kapag ang patient nyo is 4 plus sa protein sa urine, they would become edematous. Oncotic pressure would maintain the fluid in the blood vessel. In the blood vessel class, there would be decreased albumin. Decreased albumin is also known as hypoalbuminemia. Low albumin in the blood because majority of the albumin was excreted in the urine. This can lead to hyperlipidemia. Hyperlipidemia refers to increase in lipids. Now, in the case of necrotic syndrome, lipoproteins are excreted in the urine. Thus, no one will be able to carry lipids, leading to an increase in the level of lipids in the blood vessel. Then, there would also be depletion of coagulation factors and immunoglobulins, leading to increased risk of infection and bleeding. Untreated nephrotic syndrome may also progress to chronic renal failure. So signs and symptoms would include edema, fatigue, hypertension, oliguria, hematuria, weight gain, swollen abdomen, low serum albumin, increased serum cholesterol, and triglyceride. Urinalysis result would be uh, there would be blood in the urine or hematuria, protein in the urine or proteinuria, decreased urine output or oliguria, and your urine could be foamy. RBCs, RTE cells, oval fat bodies, fat droplets, fatty cas, and waxy cas could be visible. Take note class that fat globules and oval fat bodies are visible because of increased levels of lipid in the blood. So this is due to the hyperlipidemia. Then foamy yung urine nyo class because of the high amounts of protein, especially albumin in the urine. So take note of this class. Whenever you would urinate, urin if your urine is foamy, as in bumubula-bula siya class immediately after urination, there's a high possibility that you have increased protein in your urine. Then we have your minimal change disease. So minimal change disease is one of the nephrotic syndrome. So the etiology or the cause of this disease class is unknown. But this is usually associated with allergic reactions and immunization. So in this disease, uh, not much change would happen in the glomerulus except for the podocytes appearing to be less tightly fitting. It is common to children and could be treated well with corticosteroids. So signs and symptoms would include edema, fatigue, oliguria, hematuria, low serum albumin, increased serum cholesterol, triglycerides, normal BU, and normal creatinine. Urinalysis result would include transient hematuria, proteinuria, oliguria, and the presence of fat droplets. Then we have your focal segmental glomerulus sclerosis. This disorder class is also known as it also has an unknown etiology, but is associated with the abuse of heroin and an analgesics with AIDS. In this disease class, only a certain part of glomerulus is affected, leaving other areas normal. The scarring of the basement membrane is due to the immune deposits of your IgM and C3. C3 class is an, ex is an example of a complement protein. So the cause of the damage to the basement membrane here is your immune complexes or immune deposits of IgM and C3. Signs and symptoms would include edema, fatigue, oliguria, hematuria. And if the patient is positive for heroin and positive for HIV. Urinalysis would include transient hematuria, proteinuria, oliguria, and fat 
droplets. Now let's go to the second. So we're done with your glomerular uh, glomerulonephritis. Let's go now to the second type of renal disease, the tubular disorders. So tubular disorders class are defects in the renal tubule. They pose a threat to the renal function of the patients. Abnormals in this area of the urinary tract are either due to the following, direct injury, hereditary, metabolic disorders that will alter the normal process of renal tubule. So there are two main types. We have your ATN or the acute tubular necrosis and we have the second one, the hereditary and acquired metabolic tubular disorders. Under the hereditary and acquired metabolic tubular disorder, we have your Anfanconi syndrome, Alport syndrome, uromodulin-associated kidney disease, nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, glycosuria, and renal tubular acidosis. So let's start with your acute tubular necrosis. So in acute tubular necrosis class, there would be damage to the RTE cells of the renal tubule, resulting in acute kidney failure. Kidneys cannot perform reabsorption and secretion. So if you have ATN class, your kidneys can no longer reabsorb and secrete the necessary uh, nutrients and uh, substances. So it is a condition wherein there is a rapid onset of lack of oxygen to the kidneys leading to ischemia. Ischemia class it refers to tissue death. So when this happens class, there's a high chance that your kidneys would die. Ischemic shock of the kidneys is brought about by high voltage electricity. So kapag nakuryente ka class, one, one effect to your kidneys is this type of disorder. Sepsis, cardiac failure, anaphylaxis, massive hemorrhage. Then there's also a possible cause, exposure to neprotoxic substances. So when you say neprotoxic substances, these are substances that are deadly to the kidneys, especially nephrons, such as antibiotics, specifically aminoglycoside, antifungals such as amphotericin B, uh, cyclosporine, radiographic dye, ethylene glycol, toxic mushroom, hemoglobinuria, myoglobinuria, and heavy metals. So if a patient is suffering from ATN, it would have the following signs and symptoms. Edema, fatigue, hypertension, oliguria, hematuria, increased BUN, increased creatinine, or meron yung asotimia. There's asotimia with the patient the altered excretion or excretion of sodium. Then for the urinal, urinalysis, there would be hematuria, proteinuria, presence of RBC, presence of RTE cells, RTE cas. These two class are very important in ATN. They are the defining cells or defining uh, sediments when your uh, urine is positive or when the patient is positive for ATN. There would be the presence of hyaline cas, granular cas, Faticas and waxicas. Then, after the uh, ATN or your acute tubular necrosis, let's go to the hereditary and acquired metabolic tubular disorders. So, these are genetic abnormalities and systemic malfunctions that could affect the renal tubules by buildup of metabolic products, which exceed the ability of the kidneys to reabsorb them. So under the hereditary and acquired metabolic tubular disorders, we have the first one, Fanconi syndrome. So Fanconi syndrome is, is a failure of tubular absorption in the PCT, in the proximal convoluted tubule. Mechanism would include generalized failure in tubular reabsorption. Substances which are normally reabsorbed in the body are excreted in the urine instead of being absorbed to the peritubular capillaries. There is an increase of these substances in the urine. So when a patient has Fanconi syndrome, there's a problem in the PCT reabsorption. There would be high amounts of glucose, amino acid, phosphorus, sodium, potassium, bicarbonate, and even water. The cause for Fanconi syndrome class is unknown, but it is believed to be of genetic origin in children. It can be hereditary or due to cystinosis and heart failure. Exposure to toxic, toxic agents like heavy metals, the antibiotic tetracycline, or due to multiple renal transplants is possible. 
Urinalysis result would include glycosuria with normal blood glucose, proteinuria. So imagine this class, uh, uh, glycosuria with normal blood glucose. So to explain this class, you would be positive for glucose in the urine. But upon checking the blood glucose class, there would be a normal blood glucose. So take note of that. So if you have Fanconi syndrome, you would have glycosuria or positive for glucose in the urine, but normal blood glucose. You would also have proteinuria, low urinary pH, cysteine crystals are visible. So your tubular reabsorption is affected due to three main reasons. Dysfunctional transport cysts, transport protein, disruption of cellular energy needed for transport, changes in the permeability of the tubular membrane. Then we have your Alport syndrome. So Alport syndrome is an inherited form of kidney inflammation. This is a sex-linked or autosomal genetic disorder also responsible for the thinning of the glomerular basement membrane. So mechanism class is caused by a mutation in a gene involved in the synthesis of a type of collagen. So there's a problem class in a gene for the creation of a type of collagen. There would be the thinning of the glomerular basement membrane. So urinalysis result is same with your nephrotic syndrome in the late stage of this disease. Then we also have your uromodulin associated kidney disease. If you still remember, ang uromodulin nyo is associated with the, or is also known as your TAM horsefall, horsefall protein. So this is a problem associated with the TAM horsefall. So the disease would primarily affect the RTE cells of the renal tubule. There is too much production of uromodulin in the DCT. So this is an autosomal mutation which uh, wherein the cells would produce abnormal uromodulin that cannot be excreted. The deposition of abnormal uh, uromodulin would lead to kidney failure. Uromodulin will block the normal permeability of the tubules, cannot perform reabsorption and secretion. So signs and symptoms would include high serum uric acid, Urinalysis result would include RTE cells. Same with chronic glomerulonephritis in the late stage of this disease. Then we have your nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. So diabetes insipidus class is caused by a problem in your in the hormone vasopressin or ADH. Now, normally ADH or vasopressin would instruct the renal tubules of the kidney to reabsorb water, making urine concentrated. So the problem with this type of nephrogenic DI is the inability of the renal tubules to respond to the said hormone. So in nephrogenic DI class, your renal tubules do not respond to vasopressin. So hindi nagre-reabsorb ng water yung kidneys nyo. As a result class, excessive amounts of water are excreted into the urine. Uh, it is either inherited or acquired following lithium or amphotericin B medication. So you'd acquire this if you ingest or you would acquire uh, lithium or amphotericin B medication. Signs and symptoms, you would be positive for, you would test for the levels of ADH. Your analysis result is that the patient would suffer from polyuria. So increase yung urine output and low specific gravity. Then we have your renal glycosuria. So renal glycosuria is similar with Fanconi syndrome. And is that the only difference that is that it is inherited. Inherited renal glycosuria. Only glucose is not reabsorbed by the renal tubules. The number of glucose transporters in the renal tubule is decreased or their affinity for detecting glucose is impaired. Uh, mechanism, only glucose is not reabsorbed by the renal tubule. Glucose transporters in the tubule are defective or deficient. Signs and symptoms, normal blood glucose level but abnormally increased serine glucose. There would be also be glycosuria. Then we have your RTA or your renal tubular acidosis. This disease can alter the homeostasis of keeping optimal blood pH. 
Can you class the problem would be in the DCT or your distal convoluted tubule in collecting ducts. They fail to secrete hydrogen ions going to the urine. So if there's no hydrogen, remember hydrogen is the one responsible for the acidity. The acidity of the blood. So if there's uh, less hydrogen, bababa, or your, your blood pH would become alkaline. So uh, there would be too much uh, too much hydrogen ions in the blood, resulting to an acidic pH. Proximal convoluted tubules were unable to reabsorb bicarbonate ions. Urine is always alkaline due to the increase of carbonate ions in the uh, specimen. This results in acidic blood pH and alkaline freshly voided urine. So take note of that class. Huh? Ang um, blood pH nyo, if you have renal tubular acidosis, you have a very acidic blood pH, but an alkaline, freshly voided urine. So signs and symptoms would include potassium depletion, muscle wasting, muscle weakness, paralysis, and calcium loss and bones. Urinalysis result, there would be high urine pH, elevated urine calcium, and kidney stone. Now let's go to the third renal disease class. So we're halfway through. The third one is the tubulo interstitial diseases. This group of disorders primarily lack or primarily attack the renal interstitium. But since renal tubules are in close proximity, secondary infection could also affect the renal tubules. Interstitium class, take note, is the fluid containing space between the skin and the kidneys. This is caused by pyelonephritis or interstitial nephritis. So, pag pyelonephritis class, there are two types, acute and chronic. And for interstitial nephritis, we have your acute interstitial nephritis. So, let's start with the first one, the acute pyelonephritis. So, whenever you would hear pyelonephritis, this would usually involve the upper urinary tract. So this is the inflammation of the upper urinary tract and the renal interstitium. Bacteria from the urinary, urinary bladder in cases of cystitis would move in an ascending movement going to the renal tubules and interstitium. Incomplete emptying of the bladder while urinating contributes to this. Aside from that, urinary obstructions like kidney stones, pregnancy, and reflux of urine are also culprits. So these are the causes class uh, of acute pyelonephritis, kidney stones, pregnancy, and reflux of the urine. Um, um, but, but the most common cause of acute pyelonephritis class is untreated, untreated urinary tract infection. So if you have UTI class and you did not treat, you did not treat your UTI, it would develop into acute pyelonephritis. So here you would find the following findings, urinalysis findings, hematuria, proteinuria, alkaline pH, leukocytes, bacteria, WBC cas, bacteria cas, and positive in urine bacterial culture. So your acute pyelonephritis, as I mentioned, is caused by the ascending movement of bacteria from a lower UTI to the renal tubule. So from the bladder class, from the bladder uh, or the lower lower UTI, lo the bacteria would move to the upper urinary tract, leading to pyelonephritis, specifically sa renal tubules niya and sa interstitium. Bacteria in the bladder will go up to the ureters. It will traverse renal tubules and cause infection in the interstitium or the space between the kidney and the skin. So signs and symptoms would include many WBC cas, bacterial cas, patient is positive for bacterial culture. This uh, acute pyelonephritis class could be worsened by renal calculi, reflux of urine, and incomplete emptying of the bladder during urination. This could be another cause why bacteria proliferate and move from bladder to the kidneys and eventually in the interstitium. Then we have your chronic pyelonephritis. So as acute pyelonephritis progress, unbeknownst to the patient, it develops into a chronic form with permanent damage to the renal tubule. Urinary reflux is due to structural abnormalities in the kidneys. 
congenital pyelonephritis in children is often diagnosed until renal impairment is advanced. So, ang um, ang problem with chronic pyelonephritis uh, in in cases where in the patient does not know that he has acute pyelonephritis, it would be left untreated, and worst case, it develops into this chronic pyelonephritis. Uh, signs and symptoms class would include increased BUN. Urinalysis would include hematuria, proteinuria, alkaline pH, leukocytes, bacteria, WBC cas, bacteria cas, granular cas, waxy cas, and broad cas. Positive in urine bacterial culture. Now take note class that your BUN is increased because of the inability of the kidneys to eliminate this due to the damage to the renal tubule. Remember class, di ba yung BUN nyo is one of the excretory products. So it's usually excreted in the urine. But because of the damage to the kidneys, it's no longer eliminated, leading to high amounts of PUN. There would also take note, WBC cas, bacterial cas, and a positive for urine bacterial culture. Then we have your acute interstitial nephritis. Now, acute interstitial nephritis class is often drug-induced. When you say drug-induced, it's caused by caused by drugs, specifically antibiotics and inflammatory drugs. This would lead to inflammation of renal tubules and interstitium. The kidneys would fail to excrete waste products, but discontinuing the offending drug could revert back the normal renal function. There is marked inflammation of the renal interstitium followed by the inflammation of renal tubules. This is associated with allergic reaction to medications that would occur within the renal interstitium. So the drugs involved here class would include penicillin, methicillin, ampicillin, cephalosporin, sulfonamides, and thiazides. Usually this manifests two weeks after administration of the said medicine. Signs and symptoms would include edema, fever, skin rash, increased BUN, increased serum creatine. Urinalysis results would include hematuria, proteinuria, leukocytes, specifically eosinophil and WBC cas. Ang eosinophil class, please take note of this, is a WBC that is increased in allergic and parasitic diseases. So take note that there would be increased PUN, serum creatinine, and a skin rash. The skin rash class is an allergic reaction to the drug. And in urine, there would be elevated eosinophils. So that's your AIN or your acute interstitial nephritis caused by allergic reaction to a drug class. One characteristic is that the patient would develop a skin rash. Then the fourth uh, renal disorder, we have the anatomical variations affecting the urinary tract. So in, in anatomical variations, this represents congenital problems of the kidneys and urinary tract. So there's a problem class with your organ, with the kidneys itself and the urinary tract. So this would include a duplicate set of ureters. So it's, instead of having normal sets of ureters, you need to, you, you would have a double, a double the above. Then you would have a horseshoe kidney, vesicourethral reflux. Vesicourethral reflux this is a condition where in urine abnormally refluxes from the bladder back into the ureter. So di ba ang urine class would go, go from would go from the ureter then to the bladder, but in your vesicourethral reflux from the bladder class it would return to the ureters or from the urethra back into the bladder. Older men can bring changes in the urinary system. Then there's also your benign prostatic hyperplasia. So whenever you would hear hyperplasia, this would refer to enlargement. So prostatic, this would mean enlargement of the prostate, which is common in older men and can bring changes in the urinary system. Let's go to the fifth one class, the infections of the fifth renal disease. Infections of the lower urinary tract or also known as your, the most common is cystitis. 
So the lower urinary tract is also a venue for proliferation of invading organism. Some of these disorders may be asymptomatic. So under the infections of the lower urinary tract is cystitis and urolithiasis. So urinary tract infection would usually involve the urinary bladder. More often, bacteria can move in an ascending motion from filter urethra, from filter urethra going to the bladder. This is common to women because of their short urethra offering less protection from bacteria nearby vagina and rectum. Now to share to you class, the most common cause of lower urinary tract infection or your UTI is uh, unhygienic, unhygienic intercourse or unhygienic sex. When, when, when two couples would tend to have intercourse and they do not wash, they do not practice washing, they do not wash before and after sex, that could lead to urinary tract infection. So if you're practicing uh, intercourse, please make sure to pra practice proper hygiene. Magwash, maligo muna before doing it. Because women, kawawa ang babae class, women would also would tend to have urinary tract infection. The reason is because they have shorter urethra. And due to that very short urethra, it causes your bacteria to easily enter from the vagina in the rectal area. Then whenever you would wash, please do not wash from the anal to the vagina. Never wash like that class. So dapat as much as possible opposite or just wash the anal area in a different cleaning manner. So signs and symptoms of cystitis class would include fever and fatigue. Urinalysis results, so the patient would tend to develop hematuria, proteinuria, alkaline pH, leukocytes, bacteria. There would be no WBC cas and bacteria cas, but they would be positive in urine bacterial culture. Take note class that the result is negative for WBC cas and bacterial cas because TAM horse full protein is only produced in the renal tubules and not in the urinary bladder. So this take note of that. This is one way class. This is one way of differentiating cystitis from pyelonephritis. So kapag may pyelonephritis class ka, you would be positive for WBC and bacteria. Bacteria, bacterial class. Pero kapag cystitis ka lang or lower urinary tract infection or uh, you're negative. Negative ka for WBC and bacterial class. So that's one way you would differentiate. In cystitis class, only free floating WBC and bacteria may be present. Now, uh, a common a common cause of UTI class is urolithiasis. Urolithiasis, if you're familiar in the previous lesson, is also known as urinal calculi and kidney stones. So formation of these stones does not only occur in the ureter and bladder, but also in the calyces and pelvis of the kidney. Increased concentration of urinary solute contributes greatly to the formation of kidney stone. Aside from that, pH and urinary stasis are factors for stone formation. Renal calculi would vary in size. Some are barely visible to the large staghorn calculi resembling the shape of the renal pelvis. So this is an example class of a uh, staghorn. Ito, staghorn yan. Yang, ito, 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 na, ano, ito. This is a staghorn calculi. And itong part na to, this is the kidneys uh, calyces. So sa loob ng mga calyces na yan, nagpo-form yung mga uh, staghorn calculi. So ang lalaki niya class, very difficult to destroy. Now, urolithiasis class, so you would, uh, you would, before before uh, analyzing urolithiasis, you would do chemi chemical composition of the kidney stones. So you want to identify the composition of kidney stones. Are they calcium oxalate? Are they magnesium ammonium phosphate? And so on. So they play a valuable tool and you would be using X-ray crystallography. Now take note class that calcium oxalate crystals would comprise 75% of urinary crystals. Magnesium, ammonium, phosphate, uric acid, and cysteine are also known to be leading cause of crystals. 
Signs and symptoms would include urinary obstruction, pain from back to the lower leg. Urinary results would include hematuria, change in pH, and abundance of crystals. X-ray crystallography is the analysis of the major components of kidney stones through chemical methods. Then lithotripsy is a medical procedure that uses shock waves to break down stones in the kidney, gallbladder, or ureter. Remaining particles of small stone will exit the body through the urine. Calcium calculi are usually formed in patients having problems with calcium and phosphate and by food rich in oxalates like tomatoes. Magnesium ammonium phosphates are seen with patients with UTI involving urea splitting bacteria. Uric acids are seen in patients eating food in high in purine such as beans, legumes, peanuts, and meat. Cysteine are common in patients with hereditary disorders of cysteine metabolism. Then we have the last one class, the last renal disease, the renal failure. So renal failure class is basically the rapid or gradual uh, problem with your kidney. So you would be requiring dialysis or kidney transplant to get to remove your uh, nitrogenous waste. So here there would be acute renal failure and chronic renal failure. This, this could be caused by gradual progression from an original disorder to chronic renal failure or end-stage renal disease. So there would be decreased glomerular filtration rate, less than 25 ml per minute, azotemia, electrolyte imbalance, lack of renal concentrating ability, producing an isot isostenuric urine, proteinuria, renal glycosuria, abundance of granular, waxy, and broadcast. And you would also be able to see telescope urine sediments. So let's discuss the first one, your acute renal failure or your ARF. So this is characterized as the sudden loss of kidney function to remove waste and concentrate urine without losing electrolytes. It is frequently reversible. Patients would exhibit edema, azotemia, and oliguria. The damage is reversible and classified into three causes. So there are three causes class for acute renal failure. In the case of acute renal failure class, I want you to take note that this is reversible, meaning it could still be treated. Now, the causes would include three types. The first one is pre-renal. So when it comes to pre-renal class, there would be a sudden decreased cardiac output decrease blood flow to the kidneys, usually caused by trauma, surgery, hemorrhage, underlying illnesses, septic shock, burn, severe hydration. So to, to simplify class, for you to better understand this, pre-renal, meaning before the kidneys. So the blood before it reaching the kidneys, there would be a problem. So pwedeng there would be a decreased cardiac output of blood or decreased blood flow. And this decreased cardiac output, decreased blood flow can be caused by trauma, surgery, etc. Then we have the renal causes. So renal causes would basically involve the glomerular and tubular disease. So this could be glomerular diseases, tubular diseases, infection of the kidney, drug interstitial nephritis. So all of these four glass and the diseases under them, if not treated immediately, can lead to renal failure. Then we have your post-renal. So post-renal is usually after the kidneys, renal calcular or obstruction. So there would be it would be caused by kidney stones and tumors. So post-renal obstructions would manifest normal and abnormal appearing urotelial cells, usually associated with malignancies. If you remember class in your lesson four, urotelial cells are usually associated with malignancy. Signs and symptoms would include edema, azotemia, and oliguria. Urinalysis results would include hematuria, proteinuria, hemoglobinuria, waxicas, and arbicicas, and the presence of crystals. Then the last one is your chronic renal failure. The rate of progression of this disease would vary from several months to years and would occur in four stages. So the first stage, there would be diminished renal reserve, renal insufficiency, renal failure, and end-stage renal disease. 
poor prognosis class because of the loss of critical functions of the kidney. Signs and symptoms would include decreased GFR, consistently elevated BUN and creatinine, electrolyte, imbalance, consistently isostenuric urine. Urinalysis result would include proteinuria, glycosuria, hematuria, and hemoglobinuria. RBC, waxy, broadcast are visible. Broadcast is visible class because the renal tubules are already dilated. Crystals would also be visible. So that ends your renal, your lesson 5 renal diseases. So these are the references. Thank you.